substitution and elimination reactions of alcohols. Remember, hydroxide is a very poor leaving group. If we use a halo acid, HCl, HBr, or HI, we will first protonate the hydroxide to make water, which is a good leaving group, and the halide ion that's generated in the proton transfer step then acts as a nucleophile. Here is T-butanol, a tertiary alcohol. We'll react it with HBr. This proton transfer reaction changes, well, it protonates the alcohol. So now we have water, which is a good leaving group. And um, the uh, halide ion is also generated. That's going to be our nucleophile. But it can't do SN2 attack because our substrate is tertiary. So we have to do loss of a leaving group first. So the loss of a leaving group only requires this one curved arrow. And now we've generated our nice stable tertiary carbocation. And in our third step, we have nucleophilic attack at that position by the bromide ion that was generated during proton transfer of the hydrobromic acid. And so here is our final product, 2-methyl, I'm sorry, 2-bromo, two 2-methylpropane, two a tertiary alkyl bromide. What we've effectively done is we've replaced the hydroxyl group with the bromide. Right, and we of course had to have the extra step, the proton transfer, to um, make our hydroxyl into a good leaving group. For a primary or secondary alcohol as our substrate, we're going to go SN2 after we do the proton transfer. Right, with tertiary we went SN1 after proton transfer, but with primary or secondary we go SN2 after the proton transfer. So here's the oxygen taking the proton from the halo acid. This will kick out a bromide ion. And now we've made water, which is a good leaving group. And of course, this first step is proton transfer. And then our second step is SN2 substitution, so our bromide ion attacks the alpha carbon and the water leaves. So our product is the isopropyl bromide. And step two of our mechanism included both nucleophilic attack and loss of a leaving group, a concerted process because it's SN2. If we want to make an alkyl chloride, we don't necessarily have to use HCl. We can also use zinc 2 chloride. So there will be nucleophilic attack by the alcohol on the zinc to make this Svitter ion. Right, The zinc is now negatively charged and the oxygen is positively charged. This is a good leaving group. And um, chloride ion that is present in solution because of the zinc chloride then does nucleophilic attack, right? This is SN2. And so um, we get our alkyl chloride, and we should also have this. Zinc chloride hydroxide anion. Right, that's from the leaving group. Of course, um, we can also use tazyl chloride or mesyl chloride to um, change the hydroxide, which is a bad leaving group, into a sulfonate, like tazylate, which is a good leaving group. And we've seen the mechanism for this already, but uh, once you've tazylated, then you can do substitution or elimination. Right, so if we used sodium ethoxide from here, 
we would get Zaitsev elimination and if we use tert butoxide we get Hoffman elimination. Another cool way to do halogenation or uh, SN2 substitution on a primary or secondary alcohol. If you want to make um, the alkyl chloride, you use thionyl chloride, SOCl2, and that looks like this. Right there's your thionyl chloride. If you want to do bromination, your reagent is PBr3, right? The Pabst Blue Ribbon. Um, It's just like this right and so here's one propanol if we react it with thionyl chloride and pyridine we get one chloropropane if we react it with PBr3 we get one bromopropane the mechanism is pretty interesting um, but also fairly complicated. So I'm not going to make you responsible for the thionyl chloride mechanism. But I just want to show you because it's neat. So first we have um, alcohol attacking the thionyl sulfur. Uh, and then we see the um, SO pi bond becoming a lone pair. So now you have this adduct, which is vitter ionic, right? Positive on oxygen and negative on this oxygen. The pi bond, pi bond reforms here, and a chloride leaves. Now that chloride is going to be our nucleophile in a later step. And we're left with this whole mess. Pyridine deprotonates it. And now we have this SO2Cl, which is a good leaving group. Okay, so when our chloride comes in and does nucleophilic attack, SN2 style. We have the SO2Cl leaving, and that becomes sulfur dioxide, a gas, right, and chloride ion. So the fact that we get sulfur dioxide gas means that uh, this equilibrium is pulled to the right by Le Chatelier's principle. So you get a really nice high yield here. This phosphorus tribromide mechanism is not too complicated. So I'm going to use a secondary alcohol um, with a chirality center and uh, show you. First, we're going to get nucleophilic attack by the oxygen on the phosphorus. And this is going to cause a bromine to leave. So this is SN2. right? And this bromide that got kicked off is going to be our nucleophile in our substitution step. At the same time, this makes a good leaving group. So our hydroxyl group has been replaced with HOPBr2. That's our good LG. And so then in the second step of our mechanism, our bromide ion does SN2 attack at the alpha carbon and the HOPBr2 leaves. So notice our um, 2-bromobutane product is the inversion product. That's because step 2 was also SN2. Right, and here's our HOPBr2 leaving group. This one you are responsible for knowing. Of course, another thing we can do with alcohols is acid-catalyzed dehydration. So we take our tertiary alcohol, in this case t-butanol, and we react it with concentrated sulfuric acid. We could also use phosphoric here. So if you see bracket H3PO4, that also means acid-catalyzed dehydration. Of course, your substrate has to be an alcohol. And you get an alkene. And since it's tertiary, it goes E1. Now note, if our substrate was a primary or secondary alcohol, We'd first have proton transfer, and then we'd get E2, which means we'd have proton transfer and loss of the leaving group to make the alkene in the same step. 
I'm going to show the E1 mechanism now. So our first step is proton transfer, and the base is the substrate, the alcohol. It attacks a hydronium proton. Now, the hydronium proton is present from the concentrated sulfuric acid. So that first step is proton transfer. And so now we've got our intermediate, which is protonated alcohol. And that alcohol, of course, is, or the protonated alcohol, the water, is a really good leaving group now. So we only need this one curved arrow for loss of a leaving group, and we get a nice tertiary carbocation. And we also got a water molecule. And the water molecule is going to go after one of the beta protons. Let's say it takes this one right here. And that gives us our final step, which is proton transfer. Right? So this is E1 because we've got loss of the leaving group in an earlier step, followed by proton transfer in another step. E2 is when you have both of them in a concerted step, right? So E1 is sequential, E2 is concerted, and I leave it to you to draw the mechanism for an E2. So like for instance, if you had 2-butanol as your substrate and you reacted it with concentrated sulfuric, it's now gonna do proton transfer followed by E2. Um, so, pause and draw the mechanism, and then when you're done you can unpause it and check to see if you got what I did. So here's my solution. First, proton transfer from the hydronium to the alcohol to make a better leaving group. And we also made a water here, which is going to go after one of these beta protons. There, that forms the pi bond, and we've got loss of a leaving group to make the alkene.